What is up, fam? CJ Finley here, back with another Thrive on Life podcast episode. And today, I am excited to welcome one of my really good friends from the Roan. You were on the captain's squad, but now right. I guess you're you're leading all of us, <laughs> leading the charge um, for the mission with Roan. So I'm super excited to introduce Cameron A. House. How are you doing today, Cam? I'm doing great, man. Loving the Austin weather. <laughs> I try not to brag too much, but you're kind of getting the, uh, I mean, you've been here for a week now, right? Over a week. Almost two. Oh, yeah. yeah. A couple days will be two. It's, it's been phenomenal out here, and it's funny because uh, my mother-in-law is in town now, and she's been complaining. T- this morning was a little dreary, but um, <laughs> I told her that she brought the bad weather here, and that is not something That's... I recommend any male yeah. do to your mother shouldn't say that should not say that but uh i kind of broke that rule today because it is fairly nice here all the time and it's one of the reasons that i love it here but you're coming from somewhere that is not like that nope nope we definitely have all four seasons in boston four sure about that <laughs> <laughs> no i just remember going to um one one time i was my buddy lives in seaport and he was living in Brighton? Yeah. That, that's the place? Yeah. That's the place. So it was May, and I purposely waited till May to book a trip because I was like, I don't want it to be cold. Yeah. And it was literally still 45 <laughs> degrees in May. That'll happen. But we did get to go to a Boston Red Sox game, which was really cool. Yep. Um, and there's like a bar, I guess, in the in the green mo- – or yeah, yeah, underneath yeah. in the outfield. That was pretty cool. But enough of that shit. Uh, just welcome to Austin, Texas. I'm really excited for this conversation. And for those that are listening, please go check out, I'm going to put you on blast, Cam's Instagram account. Like this man is like one of the most fit people that I've ever seen. So one of the first questions that I have for you (laughs) is where did that journey in your fitness journey start? Yeah. Um, well, a just want to say like stoked to be here. Thank you. Um, and to get into where I started with fitness um, I really started cause I was bullied in middle school. Um, and you? then I, st- I started playing. I used to be uh, <laughs> pretty small. I, I grew a lot in high school, uh, almost a hundred pounds and, uh, probably like six, seven inches. But, um, yeah, I was, was bullied in middle school and went out for the football team, uh, went to a prep school and was like a buck 25. Uh, and the weight room was just a way for me to, to build that confidence. Um, and so throughout high school was, you know, was lifting, um, and then played football in college. And then after college kind of just took a step back from working out and would work out once, twice a week and really just do like the bro split and zero cardio. That was never, that was never lined up. No cardio, maybe 10 minutes on the elliptical. Uh, and so when I, that's when I was in Manhattan. Um, and then when I got to Boston, I, took a class at a gym called everybody fights and it was a morning class on a Saturday and I was never someone that worked out in the morning. Um, and so I was like in decent shape, um, but just through lifting. And that was my first experience with a group fitness class. And with that, I realized there's a lot more cardio. It's a lot more fun. And it also got me involved in that, in the community in Boston, especially in the fitness community. And I just fell in love with it and was like, I'm going to be able to take back-to-back classes. And so I need to step my cardio game up. I want to try to be the strongest in class. So I'm still going to try to lift as heavy as I can. Um, And that eventually led to me running more and doing some pretty cool things with endurance um, and physical tests where I like to challenge myself. Um, Yeah, you literally just – did you just row – Rode a marathon. That's fucking crazy. um, Which was way easier than running a marathon. When I ran, when I ran the marathon, uh, I didn't train properly, so that was probably part of it. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty comfortable on the railroad. Never rode until I got to Boston uh, and fell in love with it. And my brother started rowing and got me into it. Um, and so I rode a lot, especially over uh, the last 18 months. But um, yeah, my 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 fitness journey has evolved and and morphed and changed as I've um, as I've grown up from 15 to it's now, an my interesting- 30s thing because most people like especially males like we don't it's rare like because i have a similar story to you i wasn't even 100 pounds going into high school but it's not something that a lot of people talk about usually it's the other end of the spectrum where your people are losing weight it's not you're not 
talking about the people that are diminutive or have some reason to get bigger Mm -hmm. Um, outside of, I would say like bodybuilders, like there's a ton of bodybuilders that go from, they looked one way to, they wanted to get massive. But for the average person, like that's not a typical story. What, when you mentioned that you were bullied, what, what did that look like? And the reason I ask is for a lot of people out there, it might've happened to them and they didn't even realize it. And that was something for me that it, it did happen to me in, in a certain way where I felt not as confident and insecure and it didn't really kind of show its teeth until I got older. Mm-hmm. Um, when I was younger, I didn't necessarily understand, but for you, what did it look like quote unquote to be bullied? Yeah. Um, a couple scenarios popped in my head. I just remember like not being able to not being invited to sit with certain kids at lunch. Um, I got beat up in the bathroom, uh, one time. And then I just remember I would, kind of like take out my anger at home and it was more of like having just a short temper and kind of snapping at my mom um and she's like I'd rather have you do that here than in school and retaliate um and so that's really what it was where I was just never someone that was you know part of the the cool kids uh the cool group um and I was never I wasn't someone that was naturally like that athletic I've always had to really work hard for it um and so, yeah, just kind of being shunned a little bit and not being able to sit with the cool kids or even some of the other kids I want to sit with um, and then getting beat up in, in the bathroom. Those are the those are the memories that I remember. Um, <clears throat> and so I wanted to, you know, get bigger so that they wouldn't be able to do that to me <laughs> and they wouldn't do that to me. Um, and so that that went away in high school as I as I grew up um, into my body. But, yeah, it was a pretty shitty time. Um, I feel like everyone goes through. I mean, puberty just sucks, right? Yeah. Everyone goes through it. No one's ever like, oh, that was the best time of my life. Um, but everyone just has different experiences with it. And so that was my experience. Um, and that's why I really put a lot of energy into working out. Um, and so then it just ended up paying off as I played sports. When you first were in the weight room, because one of the problems that I had was I had no idea what the heck I was doing. Yep. And I feel like what stops a lot of people from changing themselves and and making a new path for themselves in terms of health and wellness is back go back a decade there wasn't as much inf- there wasn't as much information as there is now like right. there's youtube instagram twitter google right yeah. like they didn't, we didn't really have that which you would think would make it harder but it actually like it would kind of siloed information right. and today. A lot of people struggle because there's just so much information out there. So if you were to like flash forward to today and like kind of start that journey today for those people out there that are listening, what should they be doing to improve themselves physically, mentally, and emotionally? Yeah. Um, that's a pretty loaded question, but to start off physically, um, yeah, and I'm going to backtrack quick. I remember just buying, like, all the fitness magazines. <laughs> and it would be, like, whatever, like, Jay Cutler. And it's, like, Ronnie Coleman. What are they doing? Like, what's their chest workout? And just, like, kind of clipping it out of the magazine or bringing a magazine with me to the gym. Um, yeah, because Instagram, Facebook just started as I got into college. Um, so none of that stuff was really out there. Um, Ronnie Coleman. Do you see his Netflix? Yeah. Yeah. Like Lightweight, great. baby. Lightweight. Yeah. Uh, a little higher voice now. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the I think the hardest thing to do and the thing that is going to best help you in whatever you're doing in life is to be as consistent as you can. Um, and that plays a role in hydration, what you're eating, how you're sleeping, um, what you're consuming as far as like your friend group, online, books. Um, going to the gym, you don't need to go to the gym for two hours. Um, I realize that a lot of like what I put on my Instagram makes it seem like I'm at the gym for hours every day. (laughs) I will work out two days in a row or three days and then I'm taking a rest. Like today's a rest day. So it was just sauna and ice bath a couple times. Um, but to be as consistent as you can and just find a program or find a trainer that you trust, um, and that you have fun with whatever you're doing. So if you're really into running, keep on running. It doesn't mean you need to go and lift weights. I think that you strength training is important to running. 
Um, if you want to start working with kettlebells, find a trainer that has an ebook that you trust and you've asked your friends about. Um, but just being consistent and understanding that and what I think the beauty of working out is, is that it takes time. You're not going to be able to run a sub six minute mile within two weeks. You're not going to be able to run a marathon. <clears throat> Maybe you can, but you're probably going to destroy your body. Um, you're not going to be able to lift whatever weight you want. Everything takes time and patience. And that's what I really appreciate about the, uh, the physical side. Um, also working out is a great emotional, uh, like release if I have a lot of stress built up or, or energy built up. It's also a time where I can kind of just separate myself from if I'm not doing a group workout and just kind of I'll have a couple of thoughts and I'll just like work through them as I'm working out. I love that answer with consistency. That was actually literally the next question that I was going right. to go down. So it was cool that you kind of knew that already <laughs> without <laughs> knowing it. Um, but with consistency, a lot of people – have struggled they, they struggle with consistency and i always ask people why that is because everybody has a different perception so for you what do you think the majority of people out there why do they struggle in 2021 with being consistent whether it's health or anything else in their life like yeah. what do you think causes that issue of being inconsistent i don't know if this I think this would probably apply to most of the human race, but we're so it's easy for us to skip something into the now and not worry about it. In the I'm not phrasing that correctly. I get where you're. I get where you're going. It's easy to say. Um, it's easy to look in the future and say, "I'm going to do it in the future," or I. It's you're not worrying about your future self. It's easy just to worry about what's happening in the present. Um, and it kind of reminds me of or it does remind me of uh, Matthew McConaughey's book, Green Lights, where you can set yourself up for success by helping your future self now. So if that means that you're going to, I have struggle with motivation when I want to wake up, when I wake up and I want to work out in the morning, then lay your clothes out at night. So it's there for you. And it's kind of a reminder to get you going. So I think that we pay more attention to our current self as opposed to trying to help set our future self up. And so it's easy to, you know what, I'm going to go out and, and not that drinking or eating, whatever, you know, enjoy yourself. Um, but it's easy to say, you know what, I'm going to stay up and like binge watch all this Netflix, even though I'm going to work out in the morning. And then when you wake up, it's like, uh, I'm not really feeling it when you could spread out that Netflix show and you can make sure you try to get to bed early because you're going to thank your, like your future self will thank you. We're like not taught how to set ourselves up for success. Right. Like, and I think, I think it, I've thought through this and it just stems from when we're kids, we're chasing carrots all the time. So, and by carrots, I mean like in the present moment, there's all, there's all these carrots that we could chase. Like there's yep. a problem here. There's somebody texting us here. There's somebody calling us there. There's all this going on in the present moment, but how do we like stay focused on what actually matters? And I think, when I think about consistency, I think a lot of people struggle because they just don't even have a goal when yeah. it comes to what they're trying to do, especially in the health and wellness uh, world. And that's where I kind of want to go. So like you had this goal of wanting to get bigger um, when you were a kid, but how did that transform? How have your goals transformed as you've progressed into different modalities of fitness and then obviously as an adult now, it's not like you're worried about getting picked on in the lunchroom anymore. So that consistency for you, what do your goals look like? Like how did you come up with, I'm going to row a marathon? Like who, who in the right mind comes up with that? Um, well, my brother rode a marathon and so I had to beat him. Okay. Um, Com competition. That's yeah, one reason. Competition. Yeah. I'm, I struggle. If I don't have a goal, then I'm, I feel lost. And so I do have something that I want to do. So I'm going to be doing high rocks in the spring. Um, I think Which one are you doing? Boston. Oh, yeah. They just moved it from December to uh, – but I'm going to do it with, uh, with a buddy of mine. When is it now? March. I don't know the date in March. What the hell? Boston's <coughs> supposed to be March. Yeah. Um, Hopefully they're keeping that day. Maybe I'll do Boston too now. <laughs> <laughs> if, I don't have, if I don't have a goal, I feel lost. Um, and that is – with everything in life, but especially with, uh, with fitness. Um, like even right now, 
I don't I don't have a goal right now. I'm not working towards high rocks. I will later. Um, right now, it's just you know staying healthy, enjoying my time in Austin, but also like when I do work out with somebody, like I want to be able to hold my own. And the whole I I think that there's a a misconception about at least I know for me personally, but I think that people that are are fairly fit is that we're not nervous stepping into a new gym or I'm not worried that I'm always worried that I'm not going to be able to live up to whatever expectation I set for myself or I feel like I project out. Um, I'm worried that people aren't going to like me. I'm worried I'm going to fail. Um, and I have all these insecurities and it may not come off it because a lot of my posts have my shirt off. I'm comfortable with my body. Um, but going into a new setting, like the, my first day here, I had a little anxiety attack. And I was nervous. I was like, I'm not going to meet anybody. I was like, I only know a handful of people. Turns out that I know way more people than I realized. Um, but I was really nervous. And I go, I call my girlfriend. I said, hey, like, this may be a mistake. And then I stopped. And then I said, but how cool would it be to look back after five weeks and say that was such an amazing experience. And so that helped me go into the next day. Um, so I don't want it to come off that just because somebody may be physically, fairly physically fit that they're super confident. Um, I'm confident enough, but I definitely struggle with those insecurities of not being liked, failing, um, and just not meeting my own expectations. That's super powerful because I think the other thing that inhibits and hurts people's consistency is they're comparing themselves to somebody's part Z of the story right. rather than their part A. Like We don't know the cam that was underweight and getting bullied right we only know what we see right now on instagram and i know what that's like because the more you're trying to progress yourself the more you're going to be calling your girlfriend like is this the right yeah and that's a weird feeling it's just like especially in the world of new careers new challenges meeting new people going to new cities you're literally getting outside your comfort zone and when you get outside your comfort zone it's it kind of shakes you to your core because you start questioning like, is this yeah. where I should be in this current moment? And I think a lot of people struggle with that. And just knowing that someone like yourself struggles with that and, and questions it only helps other people that are again in part a of their journey rather right. than a, di a part later on down the line. But for you, let's, let's dive a little bit into the Instagram world because you just mentioned that you are confident with yourself now, but what was it like like when you first started on Instagram? Because I, I love a lot of your content and your and, and your ability to just be creative in a lot of different ways. But I also know coming from the content creation world, like it doesn't start like that. I still remember being in my living room and taking thirty takes of of something. Yeah. Now I just kinda just do it and just don't care and right. move on. But for you, what did that journey look like to get to the point of being confident? in yourself because I know a lot of people don't start that way. Yeah. Um, so I joined Instagram in end of 2017. I was super against it. Uh, this girl I was dating at the time had it. And so I would like go on her sometimes. Why were you against it? Why I just didn't understand. It? I had Facebook like when it came out, but I never <laughs> posted. I posted one. I've posted one photo on Facebook. Uh, I would always get tagged. <laughs> Uh, like I never didn't have a digital camera. Um, I was just not, I didn't un really understand social media. Um, I wish I had gotten into it earlier, but the main reason why I started that was because when I started teaching, um, at everybody fights is I wanted to like help promote my own classes. Um, and then I wanted to, my big thing, and I'm trying to do that here and basically any city that I go to is go to as many fitness classes as I can. So whatever, if it's running class, if it's lifting, CrossFit, whatever, yoga, um, and then promote that trainer. And it doesn't mean that they need, I'm looking for that in return. I think that's such a cool way to connect with the community where, and this is what I would first start doing is I would go to a Barry's and take Dan's class and then take a photo with Dan or like while I'm in class and, I would just use that as my way to connect with the fitness community and kind of get help get my name out there and also get to learn about the different people in the Boston fitness community. And then now that's now in whatever city I go to. Um, 
then I started, I thought it'd be cool to start doing some challenges um, and just to see if I could do them. There's a lot, I get sent a lot of challenges. 90% I can't do. Uh, some I'll try. And I do fail more often than uh, than it may seem. Do you post your failures? Yeah, I haven't done a ton of challenges where I've had a lot of fails, luckily. But for the first two and a half years, I was failing a ton. Uh, and it's it's fun. I I... I was nervous about putting the fails up and I was like, but I want people to think that I can just do this. And then people would go, but most people can't, or they'll just think they'll just expect that. So why not share that side of it? Um, so I think it's a lot of fun to share, to share the fails. Um, and that's what it was. I wanted to meet people in the Boston fitness community, pr- help promote my class. And then with the challenges kind of like challenge myself. So I love a good challenge. Um, and then it kind of progressed into doing more challenges and kind of just finding like my little niche of working like types of workouts and challenges as well. So I love that. I've actually never heard anybody kind of take the same tactic that my wife, Erin and I have used over the past uh, five years. Cause we, I joined in like 2015 or 2016 and it really, our account, my account started as the same thing of like, we would go, to San Diego and I would just take a bunch of classes and the classes I knew what to take is I'd look up the studio and then whatever instructor just had an Instagram account and seemed yep. like they were using it. That's a class okay. that we would go to. Yeah. And then we would just take a photo with that instructor afterwards and be like, yo, where should we get a smoothie or right. like, go get pizza or, or whatever. And what I started realizing was that it was such a good tool to just learn about new places. And I also thought, and I think a lot of people don't, they get nervous and, like I think overthink things, um, which is just like at the end of the day, it's just a per, it's just a human being. Right. So like that person that's instructing the class, like at the end of the class, just walk up to him and say, "Hey, like I'm in town from yeah. wherever. Um, I love your I love your class. I purposely came here. That's one that's gonna make that person feel great. Yep. But then two, because you did go to their class, like you can have an ask of like, "Hey, where where should we go? What should right. we do? And that person's gonna know better than. <laughs> yeah like you going on Google and then like somebody right. tricking the algorithm to put out whatever yeah. it wants you to see. Absolutely. And that's what I started realizing is like we were, we were meeting the coolest people and seeing the coolest places because if I'm in Boston, I'm going to hit up cam. I'm going to go to your class and then I'm going to be like, what should we do? Like right. that's off the beaten path and not what Google's going to yeah. tell me to do. No, absolutely. Um, that's, it's such a great way to connect with people and then to, find out more like what like what are the locals doing um and where do the locals go and i'd say 99.99 percent of the time like the trainer instructor is gonna want to talk to you after and more than happy to share any recommendations more than happy to take that picture um because that's you know helping them but it's also helping whatever company or, or gym they're working for um and what i've learned especially over the last two weeks is how much people want to help connect me with other people. And so I don't think that it's just a me thing where they want to help just me. I think that you could put anybody in my situation and they will want to help out that person. So I, I love connecting people. I know you do. Um, and just every one that I, every person I reach out to, whether on Instagram or I'm in their class, like they're more than happy to connect me to, places to go, places to stay away from, or people to meet. The reason I started this podcast was literally, the, the, one of the coolest feelings in the world is when someone listens to this and is like, I reached out to so-and-so who was on your podcast and like now we're like grabbing coffee or we're yeah. doing this. And that's one of the main reasons I actually started it because once you once you grow and you are traveling and you meet a bunch of people, it gets harder and harder to connect people because like, you just have so much going on and like right. you start knowing a lot of people. The easiest way that I found is just like creating environments for those people to, um, to connect themselves. And that's really where the funny thing is like you and I connected because of Roan. And the reason that I got connected with Roan was me randomly going to events and then okay. events are really what I love. And hopefully we're going to start doing more of those. Um, is because 
you don't necessarily have to be the one to physically make that connection for those other people. You're just creating the environment right. for people to show up and just meet each other be, just because you kind of promoted that event or put yeah. that event on. Um, and that's, that's where, what was your connection to Roan? How did you, cause I, I like to ask every, all the guys this, how did you first get connected with Roan? Because I think a lot of people out there don't understand that when it comes to getting connected and, and going to new cities and, and meeting new people, it really is as simple as just like finding an event and just saying, you know what, like, I'm just going to show up and see what happens. Yeah. Uh, at least that's how it is for me a lot of the times. But for you, what did that look like? <laughs> I haven't really talked uh, about my connection to the road or how I got involved. Um, <clears throat> I was fortunate. I, um, the girl that I was dating at the time, was friends with uh, was friends with Jameson, who used to work at Roan. Um, and so when they were starting the search for the captain's crew, he they want Bo- Boston was the market, and he had reached out to her and other people about individuals that might be a good fit um and so i met with him and chris and went to a workout and grabbed food and met up later that night and went out and that's really just how it happened oh yeah yeah so i mean long story short it's coming down to who you know but <laughs> yeah I, i've and so i have got i haven't had too many jobs uh but only one was through LinkedIn. Otherwise, all of my other jobs were just based off of who I know. And that's why I think it's so powerful about connecting with people because you never know where it's going to take you or who you're going to get introduced to. Because um, I wasn't looking to be part of the captain's crew for Roan. I wasn't, even in Manhattan, I wasn't looking to join um, a company called Hightower after UBS, but it's all based off of, I think most of the time it's based off of who you know. You need to be a competent person, um, but a lot of it is, is who you know and those connections. Did you just say UBS? Yeah, I used to work at UBS. Wealth management? Yep. So did I. Seven years. <laughs> Seven not, years? Not at UBS. It was three and a half at UBS, three three at UBS, and then almost four at uh, Hightower. What office were you in? I was on 50th and sixth okay have america's yeah i was in tech so we were in the weehawken okay like yeah, weehawken yeah yeah yep. tech hub I've been there. there i did not know that that's yeah. crazy small ass i world. mean that was when did i get that job 2011 to 2014 okay yeah i was 2013 okay and then didn't last very long because i was like i need to do something else with that. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, no, I did the whole route i did dude. like all the licenses and then i got my 910 then cfp uh, those have all since expired as of three years ago, but yeah. let's take a little into that then. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and this is why I love doing these. Anybody out there that's listening right now, if you have ever wanted to start a podcast or do a podcast, uh, I highly recommend it cause you never know what, what you're going to find out. Um, so I'm assuming you went to school for finance then. Yeah, I actually went, uh, I don't think I'm that great at math, but I was like, Oh, maybe I'll be like a math major. And then my friend goes, well, and he was my roommate for three years. He goes, uh, do you want to make money? Like, you should go into <laughs> finance. Uh, and so I moved over to the finance program. And, uh, yeah, I got my major in finance and then um, lived at home for, like, eight months. And actually, Where was home? Woodbury, okay. Connecticut. And then <clears throat> uh, my roommate in high school, I uh, went to prep school. He started at UBS working on a team. And so I went and interviewed. And I remember this lady – uh, interviewed me and I was basically going to work as an associate on the team. And she goes, well, you played sports and you only had a three, three. I just interviewed someone who played sports and he had like three, nine. Why, why do? didn't, and she goes, why do you think there's that difference? Like what, what kind of question is that? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. He so, tried harder. So, so I didn't get the job. Um, and I, I, kind of enjoy being told that I can't do something. So fast forward like two months later, they asked me to come back and basically work back office operations. And then I started working there, did that for a year and a half, then worked in compliance and then, or two years in compliance. And then I was asked to, I got to interview, but basically asked to work on a team called Treasury Partners, which is they're ranked in Barron's top 10 since it's come out. Um, and to lead be their like head associate 
to the team. And it was really, for me, it was kind of like a big, like, gotcha. Like, yeah. yeah, you thought I wasn't good enough for this. And now, like, I've worked my ass off to have this opportunity. Um, so for me, that was like a really big, I remember that really big win when I, uh, when I joined that team and they, they were great. Um, yeah. And then moved to Boston, worked at this place for six months, uh, had left the New York team and it was awful. I had the worst Sunday scaries. Like I was getting rashes on my body. Like I would just like get so much stress and anxiety after the weekend. Um, and just wasn't clicking with my boss and just had a very like frank conversation. It was like, this isn't working out. So we just agreed like, all right, I'll leave after 30 days. And after that was over, like I didn't have a job. So I didn't have a job from February of 17 till August of 17 or maybe no, February 18 to August 18. I didn't have a job. I was working front desk at the gym. So like a hundred bucks a week. Um, and I love this story. Yeah, like, I don't. I, it's so not really something I talk about too much. No, um, it's, it. You need to talk about it more because, like, we're there's so many people out there that don't realize that just like the patients in the gym, like your ability to do that is what got you to this point. Yeah, which you never would have happened no. if like you weren't like you know what I'm just gonna work at the front desk for whatever amount of time yeah. until I figure my shit out um, and then start this, this new path. Most people instead they go 20 years down that one path and have a heart attack or a stroke or right. like get extremely anxious and depressed. Uh, rather you kind of like stop that and it, more people need to do that and have the confidence to do yeah. that. So I, I appreciate you sharing that. Story. I was almost 30 when I did that. Um, and I remember talking to my dad and talking to my girlfriend at the time and family was like, I'm going to do this. And basically just want to make sure like I had their support, not that financially I needed to lean back on them. And if, if you're not financially set to be able to not work for a year or two, like, I don't know if I'd recommend it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a big, it was a big leap of faith and betting on myself. And I was like, I think like, I know something is going to come up. So I, after that, uh, six months, I got a job at a six where I worked for three years, um, which happened to be right across the street. So. For those of you that don't know, ASICS uh, headquarters is – their North American headquarters is in Boston. So Boston has so many running uh, – or shoe companies. Um, but, yeah, that was really good. Uh, definitely different than finance. Um, but it was, a, it was a great opportunity. And if I hadn't taken that risk when I was 30, then I wouldn't be here today. Um, but I also think that if I – they didn't put the time and effort into maintaining and kind of working out my physical fitness. There are a ton of opportunities that wouldn't have happened as well. Um, and I think this would, it would be one of them. Yeah. It's interesting because going back to the conversation around like the future self, that's really where after co co I played college soccer, but I kept working out. I didn't like, we didn't know that this whole Instagram world was going to develop and that like, yeah. like fitness, I didn't, the word fitness influencer, like what the hell? Like, no, you influencer had no idea. wasn't a thing. In, influencer in wasn't a thing. Fitness wasn't a thing. Being an instructor, like I had never, I love everything you're talking about because I never took a group class. Even though I was on the Northeast, I'd never heard of taking a group class until I visited my wife who at the time we weren't even dating, I went to Houston and took a, a spin class and I didn't even know what the fuck spin was. And I was just like, what is this? But, yeah. uh, ride in, in, I've heard of it in Austin. Uh, it's ride with a Y though, not an I in, in, I think it was like river Oaks or somewhere in, uh, outside Houston, uh, downtown. And they had like leaderboards and like, I was all competitive on the yeah. leaderboard and I was like, what the hell is this? So then we just started going to these different, uh, classes and I started realizing what we were talking about, which is like connecting in the community and things like that. And what I started to notice was that it seemed like the people, like trainers, coaches, a lot, a lot more of them had transitioned from a corporate career or something else than, yeah. than anything else. Um, and I think it's one of those things that you were an athlete as well. When I kind of think back, a lot of people that have this competitive go-getter 
mentality. Like if you put us at a desk at a something we're not necessarily going to enjoy, like it, it kind of beats you up over, mm-hmm. over the years. And that's where you got the job and you were competitive to get it. But then once you get it, it's like, now what? Yeah. And that's why I love the fitness world and the health and wellness world, because there is no now what, like there's so right. many different things that you can go and so many different paths yeah. that you can go. Um, and one of the things that I wanted to, to ask you is cause you mentioned like community and really how much of an impact that has made on, on your life. Was that always the case? Like even when you were a kid or was that something that as you kind of like were working on yourself became more of an importance in your life? Definitely the latter. I, I'm, I love being on a team. Um, and, but the community's aspect of it outside of basically football specifically, um, wasn't on my radar until I was in Boston. So I was someone I would put on my headphones, go to blink people that don't know blink. Uh, I don't know where else they have it outside of New York, but it's just a gym kind of like bright colors, but there's no classes. There's no like yoga studio where you can go and stretch in there. It's like ellipticals and weights, um, headphones in work out and leave. I was not someone that would talk to people. Um, and it was really the taking the group classes in Boston that brought that side out. And I was like, wow, this is awesome. This is a lot of fun. Look at all these new people you can meet. Um, because like you get to class and it's like, oh, I want to like be in that person's group or they want to be in my group. How fun is this? Uh, and so that's really where it started to develop. The reason I asked that question, I'm glad you answered the way you did is You're welcome. because there is, <laughs> <laughs> there's so many, like we look like gym bros. Like, I'm just going to say it. Like we look oh, like yeah. if, if you and I like were out and about somewhere and people would be like, those dudes smash weight. Like that's just what they do. Right. Yep. But the reality of it is a lot of what we do do is we're connecting with other people and we take classes and we teach classes um, and we host events. And it's one of the things that, I wanted you to kind of respond to because there's a lot of people out there, I think, especially like football guys that could really benefit from not just ben- not just going to the gym and just sitting on a bench or, right. or squatting, like go take a yoga class, go take, uh, my wife used to teach bar. Like I, I would bring guys oh, to bar class, dude. It's so hard. It is the hardest thing. <laughs> like I never sweat more than in bar. Yeah. You literally are shaking. But then when you leave that class, you're like, wow, there's so much that the human body, I thought I knew, right? but I, I don't know. Or I thought I was strong. Yeah, exactly. But I'm not. But I'm not. <laughs> um, so it's just like being able to kind of put yourself in these new environments that not only are going to improve your physical capabilities, but just like Cam was explaining, your career, your friendships, when you're traveling, meeting yeah. new people. Um, one thing that I kind of pride myself on is that I am down to take any type of, um, fitness class, except ones that involve dancing. <laughs> like I did one, it's called uh, bar groove in Boston and you're on like a mini trampoline. And then I was like, well, I want like they advertise with pom pom, some class that pom poms. It was started by a former, uh, Patriots cheerleader. And I was like, I want to use the pom poms. Like I want to like go all the way in or I want to do yoga or hot yoga. I suck at yoga bar Pilates. Like I'm always, um, I always want to try to get outside my comfort zone a little bit. Just dances. That's a no go. So now you have to go to Houston and and you have to go to dance house fitness. I don't, you have to go. I'm an off. I'm, I'm an awful (laughs) dancer. Uh, that means that's the best. (laughs) That's the best part. So there's a place called ballet Austin here in, in, uh, in Austin. And we used to go, I think it's Tuesday nights, um, Aaron does hip hop and me and my buddy and my other friend who actually is from Boston, I brought him at first he was resistant, but I brought him to, to hip hop class when we were here, man, the, the beauty is like you go to a beginner class, like 50% of the people are, are trash. Right. So like, but it made me realize like. I, I started going every week because in the mirror, I was like, I look so stiff. And I was like, if I can get myself to not be as stiff, I'm probably going to be better and a better athlete, like right. in everything else that I'm doing. So seeing that, that's where the competitiveness might catch on for you is just like, I was with a bunch, like 
one of my buddies who would go is an ex-football player. Yeah. And he's like six six two, like two hundred pounds. And we would be in the mirror, and I'd be like, I look so ridiculous right now. But that competitive switch. So I, I, I recommend like find the environment that is conducive to what, what. Yeah. Kind of like don't go to a ballet class. Like I think that's stupid. But go to like maybe like hip hop or something because it will help in in other areas and it did it did help for me um but what is your favorite class like if you like and you can't say everybody fights like it has to be like um well it doesn't have to be boston either i want to touch on that why i'm so nervous i think i look stupid and i realize that that's something that a lot of people deal with going into any class um facts and the thing is nobody cares nobody's looking at you unless you the instructor is and that's it like you're gonna worry about everyone is worrying about themselves um but i don't know if it's a but and i still struggle with that though thinking about going to a hip-hop class or a dance class when really i should try to take my own advice and be like no one's really gonna care no one no one's gonna walk out and be like that guy was so was such trash like let's talk about it or let's make fun like no one is gonna care so I do need to take my own advice with that. Um, what's my favorite class? I think you'll have fun. Like I've seen again, I mean, your, yeah. your Instagram account. Like it, like especially like hip hop. Like if you get if you find the right place and yeah. you go with the right people, like there, there's definitely it's challenging. It, it's fun. Like and you get a good song and like they teach you yeah. periodically. Like it is legit. There's an instructor in Boston, uh, Jesse, and so she started hip hop pop up. Um, so I'm sure I could like she could. Take me to Here's, the side I'm gonna and be you like, this. "Oh, this is what you should do." If when 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 we get all the Rune guys together, we all got to do a hip hop class. <laughs> That's the easy out. <laughs> That'd be it's fun. Like everybody in the same yeah. room, looking like all right. ridiculous, and then it is it is a ton of fun because I was just like you. Like I I've known Erin since I was ten years old. She was doing hip hop her whole life. I never went to a class until one until my buddy started going to ballet Austin here, and she never got me to go. And then my buddy, who was yeah. like, if he could do it, like, fuck it, I could do it. Yeah, yeah. And then we, I went one time, and it was just like, it was actually pretty fun because I'm so bad. And that's the other thing is, um, like, you're good at a lot of different things. It's feeling like a beginner again. And yeah. I literally, before, I, I love this conversation because before, when you were, uh, before you got here, I was thinking, I was like, what can I do to, like, add more fun into my life? And I saw my guitar the other day. And I'm trash at, at, at music. Like, it's just not it's just not my wheelhouse. So I started thinking, like, maybe I should get, like, an instructor to teach me how to play guitar. Yeah, guitar. I uh, So I can read music, and I can play very okay. But I played a lot in, um, in middle school and high school. All right. That's so. another sign then. But back to the question. What is your favorite – or name a few that have been some of your <laughs> not, favorite Not classes. sponsored by any of these. Um Hmm. I mean, berries comes to mind just because I've been taking a ton of berries recently. Um, so I enjoy berries. I enjoy running like that distance. Um, my knees have been bothering me, but I do enjoy running. Um, let's see. In Boston, everybody fights. Broncor. Um, Sweat fix is another good one. That's rowing based. Um, what has been the hardest class that you've ever taken? The hardest class. Uh, so hard in two different ways. One it has been, or I guess, a Pilates and bar. So bar three in Boston, well, they have bar three in other places. And then a Pilates, Care Duval Pilates. Like people will think like, oh, like I do core challenges. And it's like, oh, I have such strong core. It's like, I have a strong core in certain things. Not in Pilates. Like it is, I'm not that not strong at all. I'm the constantly, she'll be doing something for say a minute and like 15 seconds in, like I'm taking a break. Um, or have I'm, you ever taken or, solid or, core? No. No, Dude, I've not. go downtown here yeah. before you leave, take solid core. Like, and then not be able to laugh for like a yeah, week. Yeah, <laughs> that is like, that, that was what, that's one that came to mind. It was like harder, harder classes on, because I'm the same way. Like I, I think I have a pretty good core and then you get into classes yeah. like those and you're just like, 
the, the holds are what get you. You're yeah. not used to like, no matter how in shape you are, you're never used to holding weight, right. small amounts of weight and pulsing for that oh, yeah. time frame. It's just not something we do on a daily basis. No. Um, and then the hardest class kind of just overall, uh, and I actually trained for it for my first one, uh, is Tone House mm. in New York. <clears throat> um, so I've taken it twice. And I went the first time I went with a couple friends, and they have the waiver where if it's your first one, take Tone House 101 and don't eat three hours before. And I was like, oh, my gosh. So I followed it. I didn't do the 101. I went right to the regular class, but I didn't eat before. And I got so competitive that the warm-up, uh, have you taken Tone House? Yes, I have. The warm up for most classes is a workout. It's more than a workout in itself. And I was so pumped that I got bumped to the front of the line, which is just way more pressure, too. Because like, people are just flying. Um, then there was rowing involved. And then it was like burpees with dumbbells, which just smoked me. But, uh, and then the last time I took it, we were doing like the gallops where you're like on your hands and knees, like running. Um, and then runners, your hands are on sliders. And with that, that was I was very close to puking and kind of like stopped halfway because I just was like so trashed. I took a Barry's class before a Tone House class. That's... <laughs> <laughs> I was with a group of my buddies from one of the companies we were we were helping out, and we were doing like multiple classes a day, and we did a Barry's class and then a Tone House oh, class. God. Not recommended whatsoever. No. Um, yeah, it was it was bad, and it was honestly like. I didn't like it that much only because I'm the type of person that um, likes things a little bit slower and just like more instruction just so that like it's more safe and mm -hmm. like um, so but that's their model and to, to each their own um, but yeah some of those classes like the reason I wanted to ask is just one for selfishly anytime I go somewhere else I want to know and then two for the people out there maybe they want to go take a class but I'd love to 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 end this convert go towards the end of the conversation and switch it up a little bit and just ask you a little bit more about like what are your what are your goals in life now above and beyond fitness so clearly you have this breadth of um, different experiences in different areas what is what does the next five years ten years look like and what do you and it 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 doesn't have to be as heavy as a question as as it seems it could literally just be like. <laughs> Yeah, I just became the. This is this is my job now, and this is what we're trying to do. And like, so yeah. here's my life. Some of my life goals, like however you want to take it, uh, feel free to run with it. Yeah, uh, life goals. One, um, work on being more vulnerable. Work on empathy. Those are things I struggle with. Um, for people listening, who don't know, lost my mom in high school uh, to breast cancer. So that definitely put up a a wall. And then working out only helps build up that wall. Um, so I've, uh, made a lot of friends and see a therapist that has helped lower that wall in some capacity and need to s continue to do that. Um, second family, I'm obsessed with kids, love kids, can't wait to have kids, bunch of nieces and nephews. That's up there. Um, see more of the country and the world, um, as things open up, um, and then with this role, like I love bringing people together. So now as a community leader at Roan, um, super stoked about it and emphasis, big emphasis on men's mental health, uh, mainly because it's a men's apparel company, um, but continue, continuing to connect people and bring people together. Like I get so much joy and fulfillment out of that where I don't need to be the center of attention. I'd rather bring people together um, and also just meet new people get out of my shell because it's not always super easy for me to just, I don't know, just strike up a conversation. Like my girlfriend, you could put her in a room, she doesn't know anyone and <laughs> she'll leave, right? And like be invited to a wedding. <laughs> me, like that takes, it takes a lot for me to do that. Um, and so I'm someone that needs like recharge by myself. Um, but I, whenever it's like at an event or putting on an event, like I just get so jacked up and excited about it. And then after is I crash. But, um, yeah, continuing to build a community of our own um, and just bring men and women together. So, I love that. And sorry to hear about your mom. I feel like it, that type of story is something that 
we all can connect to in some, in some type of way. We all have lost somebody or know somebody that has lost somebody and, and putting up that wall is something that, again, fitness like helped me really break through um, for my own life and same, same with Aaron, my wife. And it's cool to connect with other people yeah. that have gone through that that similar thing and it's something that I think a lot of people don't necessarily look to like especially like group fitness as as something that would help you in that area um, of life when when something like that happens like it's obviously devastating but um, the reason I'm even saying this is because people out there like have lost people over the past year or two years Mm -hmm. I highly recommend getting back into the group fitness arena and an event space because it is something that i think for mental health is is so needed and yep. i never really talked about men's mental health until i got into in like into group fitness cir- right. type of circles like it never was a thing it mm-hmm. didn't talk about it during sports it's one i think fitness is the one area where i have found other men who are like the fact that you're just like i'm trying to be more empathetic like how many people say that like not that many people. I like, can empathize uh, with it. But. <laughs> yeah, you can exactly. But on a general basis, like, yeah. When I was in the corporate world at UBS, that was not something no. that like that people talked about. And that's one of the reasons I love um, the fitness space, the health and yeah. wellness space. I in, will th- in general. I will say that the last has been like eighteen months now has been really shitty. Um, but I, what I've seen is that it is now not just accepted, but encouraged for men to talk about their feelings and emotions. And I feel like people have gone through so much depression and anxiety or feeling alone and started talking about it more. And now everyone's like, well, now I'm not the only, like, I'm not the only one that's feeling that way. And so it's become a lot more accepted and really, and like I just said, like encouraged. Um, so that's like a silver lining in this whole shitty situation. Yeah. Right. Rising, rising tides lift all ships and it's being that one person that's willing to be vulnerable to like lift that other person up to want to do the same thing. And there's something you said that I just remembered when you were talking about events and how like when you throw them and you get to be more of a host, you don't have to be the center of attention. And it's something that I think for me over the past, almost we're going on two years now, like, I've ha- I've struggled with my mental health in that area because I was so used to creating that environment for people and once that was taken away I didn't like I didn't know what to necessarily do because people would think like we're on social media a lot right you would think we want the spotlight but like and even with the podcast I created a podcast cuz I want to ask you questions and like get your story out yeah. there and when that's taken away it I don't know how it was for you, but uh, for me, it was a lot of like soul searching of what what can I do above and beyond what I was doing prior, and that's where the online stuff mm-hmm. and things of that nature came about. What moving forward? What are some of the types of events or things that you want to do? And this is more of like a selfish personal question. Um, <laughs> What are, what are you looking to do? So, like, what – do you have any cool ideas or what – just – and the reason that I ask this is because there's other people out there. Like, when I say events, like, the average person is just like, I don't I don't know how to throw an event or yeah. what, what to do or how to gather people. So, for for you, if you could give advice to some maybe some of the ideas you have or some of the things that you're working on so then maybe somebody else might be inspired to go out yeah. and, and provide that event and provide that space – that I know has impacted my life so much? Um, Well, I was definitely nervous. I I could still get a little nervous. But uh, holding events because I thought no one would want to come. People want to go, and people want to connect with other individuals. Um, So that shouldn't be a a worry. But um, a lot of events that I want to start doing are there are going to be some co-ed, um, but as far as like men's specific ones, it's you need to, I want to have a mental health component. So like some intentional discussion in there. And so what I've found is that whether it's through a group breath work, ice plunge, 
workout. Um, it could be like top golf dinner, some type of like paintball. So it could be like a, some manly event that lowers the walls. And then having an intentional discussion about what are you scared of? Like, how do you like in society? Like what are like over the last 18 months? Like what is, what are some emotions that you've gone through? How have you dealt with them? Who are you talking to? Like, what does this person mean in your life? Um, Cause I think that it's important for us to have these conversations and to just continue to emphasize that people, it's okay to talk about your emotions. It's okay to open up and open up as much as you want to. I've been in discussions where sometimes I may not say something. I just don't feel like I, I just don't feel compelled to, and I don't, I don't want to. And there's no judgment or criticism from anyone within that conversation. Then other times I'll open up. Um, and so, yeah, most events that I want to hold going forward. Um, and I'll obviously talk to you and the other captains about this, but having a mental health component um, involved. So however you, whatever creative ways you, you want to approach that. Um, but I think having <clears throat> some type of manly thing before it, uh, really helps you lower that wall and then be more willing to, to share. And so even if it's a co-ed event, have a big workout and then split the group in half. Cause guys are, I'm more willing to share as opposed to if a woman is in the room. And I think that it would be the same way if it was a bunch of women and then there was a guy, right? Remove the guy and the women are more, are going to open up more, which yeah. is so much more powerful. I love that. And if you ever go paintballing, Oh, I haven't been there. paintballing since high school. That is like, My when you said that, that like, <laughs> I've I've wanted to do that for a while. We were actually supposed to do it. I think it was like around my thirtieth or something. It just didn't happen, and it's one of those things that I was just like, that would be so fun. So fun. Um, play like capture the flag or something. That's paint. Oh, all right. Sidebar, but we're getting close to wrapping up. Cam, it's been absolutely awesome getting to to chat here with you, and I can't wait to to drop this episode and give it out to everybody. But before. We do that. We always wrap up in the same way. How is, what is the best way for somebody to get in contact with you? So they listen to this episode. They love what you had to say and yep. they would love to reach out to you. How do they do that? All right. So here's my address. No, I'm just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Instagram is the easiest way. Uh, so it's Cameron a house, one word. Um, and yeah, I, uh, I, don't know, I love receiving DMS and like chatting with people cause you get to, end up like finding out about their story which is, is super powerful so yeah the more the more that we can connect and just like you were talking about in, in that mental health space is just like learning more about other people yep. and, and their story um it's just gonna make this world a better place which is what we're all after here last question we always ask everybody what does thriving mean to you so feel free to take a couple seconds here doesn't have to be anything like crazy it's just like no, when you yeah. think of the word thriving I am, what do you think that of? means I am comfortable in my own skin uh, and I'm comfortable with what I'm doing so that whatever the situation comes up, I feel I have enough confidence in myself to, to get through it. So whether it's some type of loss or whether it's a workout or if it's put me in a room with a bunch of random people that I don't know and I need to talk my way, uh, talk to them. Um, yeah, so just being being comfortable with yourself and, and trusting yourself and knowing that you're going to lead yourself in the right direction and get through any situation. That is probably the most unique response that I've had. To what do that. most people say? It's, it's all over the map, right. to be honest. Uh, it's it, it usually connects with them at some capacity, but that I've not heard. I've never even thought of. So that was a, a wonderful response. Thank you for that. Thank you for coming on here today and spending some time with me. Thank you. At the end of every episode, I kind of give like my biggest takeaway and really just the community, the reminder of how important community is. And just hearing you talk about how you like weren't doing group fitness at all. And you just like started doing it as a more of a challenge. And then you just started meeting people and kind of hearing that progression has reminded me of how important that is in life. And it doesn't just have to be fitness. It can be in any capacity where you got new jobs, careers, friends, you're here in Austin meeting people. And it all stemmed from like just the willingness 
to put yourself out there. So if you're listening to this right now and you made it this far, one, thank you, but two, find a way that you can put yourself out there today and then that's going to help your future self where in ways that you can't even you can't even fathom right now. So that was a great reminder here on today's podcast. Please if you could review this, rate it, give us that five star. It would help so much and then share it with somebody who might be able to gain some value from it. This is CJ Finley with the Thrive on Life podcast. Thrive on y'all.